Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School teaches product management, coding, data analytics, digital marketing, and blockchain courses online and at our 15 campuses worldwide. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events and host online webinars, live streams, and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar to check them out. Hello everyone, my name is Casey Phillips and thank you for joining me for this product school webinar on increasing chatbot user engagement with personalization. A little bit about me before we dive into the webinar. Uh, I'm currently the chatbot product owner at Intuit. I've been working in the chatbot space for the last couple of years and I'm an avid blogger in my free time on chatbots and all things AI for Chatbots Magazine and the startup. So first let's start off with explaining what exactly user engagement means for a chatbot. Uh, well, the easy answer for that is it means everything. With how user engagement chatbots provide absolutely no value. Think of a chatbot that introduces itself as like a welcome message, says hello to the user. Uh, the user does nothing. They don't message the chatbot back. Uh, they don't click a response button if the chatbot has one, but they don't take any form of action that the chatbot provides. Um, in these instances where there's no user engagement, there's no opportunity for the chatbot to provide any, meaning, any meaningful value to the user. Uh, the chatbot is not going to cut it in the long run. Generally, you'll see higher quality, higher forms of user engagement, usually deeper in the conversation, the deeper you go, uh, the more likely it is that the user is actually getting the answer to the problem that they need, or the user is actually getting the value that they're looking for. If the user, you know, for example, is looking to, uh, to use the chatbot to order pizza, uh, the further you, the user is able to get into the conversation, the more likely they are to actually be able to order that pizza um, and get that value. Um, unless, of course, the user is stuck in an endless loop. Um, always that's always something that you want to avoid when creating or designing any chatbot. Uh, you don't want users to uh, end up stuck in, and just kind of going through, through repetitive motions with the chatbot. Um, that would obviously get them you know, further into the conversation in terms of conversation steps. Uh, but certainly not a high quality of user engagement or any value being provided there. So um, definitely an exception to, to that rule. Um, and there's, right now, there's a general negative connotation of chatbots that can definitely be an obstacle to their user engagement. Uh, the current public perception of chatbots is mixed at best, I would say. Uh, a lot of this is due to the struggles of early chatbots. Uh, they create a lot of pre preconceived notions um, and just a lot of pessimism from users that can be very hard to overcome. Uh, there's a lot of users that lack confidence in the capabilities of chatbots now because of that. So chatbots really need to showcase their abilities early and often uh, and wow users um, to really prove it to them uh, that the chatbot can provide value and that it is worth the user's time and that it's better than the user picking up the phone and calling a human or whatever um, the user did before. Uh, this chatbot existed. Uh, so moving on, what exactly is personalization when it comes to chatbot? Well, really, it just involves um, customizing um, the conversations and creating customized intimate conversations that appear tailored to each individual user and their situation. Uh, it helps boost confidence that users have in the chatbot, which leads to um, ultimately increased user engagement. A uh, shortened path to value for the user. So we're talking about what that is um, having the user requiring the user to go through fewer conversation steps and back and forth with the chatbot so they get their answer um, or get the value that they're looking for. Uh, one thing you, that you will notice frequently, frequently with users, depending on um, how like, the space of the chatbot is in or exactly what the chatbot's doing or supporting. Um, users will kind of like varying fuses as to like how much time and effort they're willing to spend on this chatbot um, uh, until they get the value that they're looking for before they're going to get frustrated and you know and, and try an, an alternative method of getting the value that they're looking for. So if you're making them go through too many conversation steps, too many back and forth with the chatbot, or it's just taking too long in overall time duration you definitely run the risk of the, the user's fuse running out and they'll either pick up the phone and call someone or uh, find some other way uh, outside the chatbot of getting the answer or value that they're looking for. So ultimately, um, 
we're really trying to create an optimized chat experience for the user with personalization and really um, help to, to increase user engagement, just create overall a better chatbot and a better experience. Uh, so there's a few different types of chatbot personalization that I want to highlight. Um, and, and they kind of start on uh, the lower end in terms of um, how much influence and impact they can have and kind of increase as we go through them. So the first um, most basic form of personalization, personalization I had to call kind of the wow factor stuff, um, that would include addressing the user by their name or perhaps mentioning uh, the weather, if you, if the chatbot is able to know um, where that user is chatting from, where they're located. Also, just even changing the greeting based on the time of day, so the chatbot knows what the time, um, what time of day it is for that user, what the time zone is. Uh, so, you know, good morning in the morning, good afternoon in the afternoon, good night at night, um, and, and etc. cetera. Uh, you can also randomly customize the way responses are phrased. So if you have, uh, so welcome message every single time it's phrased a little bit differently, you know, it, when the chatbots acknowledge and the user don't always have to say, okay, like have it sometimes say for sure, sometimes say like got it. Um, just customizing things like that so the user, um, so it doesn't just start to feel repetitive and dull to the user um, and it, it helps prevent them from getting bored with the chatbot and the conversation. Um, but outside of kind of like helping with the initial user impression, uh, it really does not provide a lot of value to the user. Uh, but it definitely is important and, and especially um, early on in the chatbot conversation and like the chatbot's initial message, like that welcome message, it can really help to um, get the user uh, over the cliff and to kind of commit to responding and interacting with the chatbot and going down the path of um, having a conversation with it. Uh, there's also historical user activity personalization. So this involves customizing the conversation based on any past activity of the user. Like past activity could be with the chatbot um, or with the product or perhaps a website that the chatbot supports. An example of this would be um, if you had a chatbot that helped user order pizzas. Uh, when the user interacts with the chatbot, if you know that um, every Sunday there's like a game day special and the user always orders that and they and you know their delivery address and you know their, their payment information instead of requiring the user to enter all of that every single time if that user chats with your chatbot um, it's sunday you know that game day special is going and you know that the users maybe ordered that like four of the last five times on, on sunday um, the chatbot can say hey we've got our game day special going i see that you freaking or order this today is this what you would like to order uh, no, the users are reminded of that special. Now all they have to do is respond yes, and they've got their their initial order, um, their their initial order going just like that. The user doesn't have to type everything that they're looking for. They don't have to type all their toppings, like what drinks they want. Um, just one quick response, and they're moving on. You could do the same thing with their delivery address. If you know the address that they get delivered to, uh, then the chef can, can say, "Hey, I see that uh, we have your delivery address as such and such." Is this where you want the pizzas delivered to? The user says yes, they're moving forward. Same with their payment information. Um, so in this case, now we're really providing a lot of value in addition to just wowing the user. So uh, ultimately, the value that we're trying to provide is to provide just a quicker, more seamless, and easier experience for the user to order pizzas than they could either order them online on the website or over the phone with a human. Um, by, by remembering you know, what the user likes to order. Um, we're making it a lot easier for them. It's a lot quicker. Uh, the user doesn't have to type everything out. So we're just really creating that seamless experience that's faster for them. If the user had to type everything out, it would honestly probably be easier for them to just place the order online um, or to go ahead and just call someone over the phone. Um, also have to keep in mind, you know, if the user's on a mobile device um, and they're just trying to interact with the chatbot through an app um, or on their phone, uh, then, you know, making them type all that out would really be cumbersome. So we're really providing even more value uh, for mobile users in this example. So uh, again, we're impressing the users, but again, ultimately providing them with, um, with a lot of value that hopefully uh, cause them to go from being a new user to being a frequent recurrent user of the chatbot. Um, the last type of personalization I'd like to talk about um, the one that is my favorite, really the most powerful, is the real-time user activity personalization. 
Uh, what this is all about is customizing the conversation based on the real-time activity of a user that's interacting with the product or the website that the chatbot supports, or it could even be um, based on um, the user's actual need to be customized based on their real-time conversation with the chatbot as well. A great example of this would be a support chatbot that lives in a product or lives uh, in a website and it supports that. If you know, for example, that users are in a certain section of your product, uh, if there's an overwhelming FAQ that users always seem to have, um, it's like a really frequent issue that always seems to plague users at this part, um, at this certain part or section of your product, you can have the chatbot actually they present that to the user early in the conversation and say, hey, I see that you know, you're, at, um, you're you know, working on this such and such part uh, of the product. Um, you know, is, 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 is this the problem that you're having? Do you need help with this? Uh, so now not only are we wowing the user and we're really impressing them, uh, but we're also overcoming one of the hardest things about chatbots. And that's how do you handle when the user um, asks something in a way that the chatbot is not prepared for. Um, in this case, we've been proactive and we've actually gotten ahead of that. So we don't have to worry about the user asking this question or how they could potentially try to ask this question or phrase it. We're presenting it directly to the user. Um, and if the user is having the issue, then they can just respond yes to the chatbot and you can start down the troubleshooting path. Uh, another example of this would be, um, a, a great example would be a sales chatbot that could potentially change its sales recommendations or product recommendations and the options that it presents um, based on what the user is currently shopping for or looking for. So for example, if a user is currently looking for a certain type of hat and it um, you know, opens a, uh, the, the pop-up, the chat pop-up, uh, then the chatbot early on in the conversation could present relative content um, uh, relate to, to the hats that the user is looking for. Um, and, and not only does that, uh, you know, show a lot of confidence um, to, to the user that the chatbot actually is able to provide value to them, um, but it, um, it also will hopefully, you know, lead to better sales conversions for the chatbot as well. So um, to kind of sum up the real-time user activity personalization, it really creates a lot of value for the user and it really helps shorten um, the path to the answer. Um, so the chatbot already has an idea of what users want and need um, without needing to ask. So it really is great at kind of, especially cutting out a lot of the, the early steps in the conversation um, that will have to kind of happen for the chatbot to, to get an idea for the user's situation and what they're looking for. Uh, instead, right when this conversation starts, the chatbot already has an idea of what users are looking for and the conversation begins already tailored to that. So it's really great for impressing users, great in the wow factor, uh, but also just really provides a lot of high value to the user that should create a great uh, chatbot conversation experience and keep these users coming back for more. So in summary, there's really no such thing as too much personalization when it comes to chatbots. I definitely recommend mixing and matching the different types of personalization that I've mentioned in this webinar to really find the perfect fit to get your chatbot users engaged. Um, there's really no perfect formula, something that you probably have to play with and see, you know, what users, um, what resonates the most with users and what really gets them to engage more and what really kind of makes or breaks um, their conversations and causes them to get the most value. And definitely don't fret if your chatbot is only really capable of all the basic wow factor personalization, like addressing the user by their name, mentioning the weather, customized greeting, you know, good morning, good afternoon, um, based on time of day, stuff like that. If that's all your chatbot's capable of doing, that's still fine. Um, that's better than nothing. Just really try to do as much as you can, um, especially early on in the conversation in that welcome message to really get users over the cliff and get them to commit to actually engaging with your chatbot and having a conversation. I definitely recommend those saying a longer term goal of um, getting your chatbot to the point where it is capable of driving value through the activity based personalization that we talked about. So the historical um, user activity and then just even more importantly and even better the real time user activity if you can get to that point. Um, remember that without user engagement a chatbot really has no value. Uh, it all begins with user engagement. Uh, if the users don't engage with your chatbot there's, there's nothing. Um, you, you don't have any opportunity, you don't have any chance to provide any value, 
uh, and to you know keep that user coming back for more. So user engagement is incredibly important with your chatbot, and you've got to be innovative and you've got to be creative and find ways to really help drive it. Um, ultimately, it comes down to just really impressing and, and impressing and winning over those users that I mentioned that are a lot of them pessimistic towards chatbots and have doubts and have concerns and think this is a waste, this chatbot is a waste of my time. Uh, it doesn't know the answers that I'm looking for. This chatbot can't help my personal situation. There's a million um, negative thoughts and connotations that go through a lot of users' minds when it comes to chatbots. And again, as I mentioned before, a lot of it, um, it, it is definitely earned um, and, and it's definitely justified. And it's based on um, a lot of past struggles from early chatbots that came out that just did not have a lot going on underneath the hood. Um, and, and chatbots that um, just really provide bad user experiences. But over the years, um, chatbots are evolving, especially right now, chatbots are evolving at such a fast pace. And chatbots right now have a lot of great capabilities. But a lot of users don't know that and they're not aware of that. And they're um, a lot of times they're very hesitant to, to commit. And, uh, and, and put forth their time to actually um, be able to realize and see that value. So you've got to impress them. You've got to impress them early. You've got to impress them often, especially um, in, in that initial welcome message from the chatbot. And you've really got to prove it to the user that your chatbot is worth it. Uh, and that's going to be able, be able to provide uh, the value that the user is looking for. If you're not able to do that, the user is just going to pick up the phone call a human or find some other alternative to the chatbot uh, to get the value that they're looking for. That concludes my webinar today on increasing chatbot user engagement with personalization. Thank you all so much for watching this webinar. I hope it was very valuable for all the chatbot builders out there and I hope that you're all able to, uh, able to take some lessons from this and some things that you can use as you build and design your own chatbots. I uh, definitely encourage anyone, if you'd like, to connect with me on either Medium or LinkedIn. I love connecting with people in the chatbot space, sharing ideas, um, talking about chatbots, um, something that I'm very passionate about. It's a very exciting space right now uh, that's moving at the speed of light and it's a very exciting time to work in this space. So I um, definitely welcome anyone to connect with me. And if you have any um, additional questions down the road or like to just talk about chatbot, um, we definitely appreciate it. And thanks so much to Prox School for uh, provide me the opportunity to present with this online webinar. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.